Hey folks, welcome back for another episode of Code Club. If you've been following along in recent episodes, you know that I've been building out a R package that I'm calling Phylotyper. Now, in the last episode, I accidentally slash intentionally uh, pushed a very large file to GitHub. So my file was about 67 megabytes in size. GitHub will allow you to push things up to GitHub that are up to 100 megabytes in size. Uh, they'll give you a warning after 50, right? So between 50 and 100, you'll get a warning. Above 100, they say no. Uh, now, there is a large format uh, GitHub um, client that you can get access to. I've never used that. In general, I find that if I am submitting data that's gigantic like this, that there's probably a better way. And so what I'd like to do is get that out of GitHub and get it out of my Git history. I could go ahead and delete it on my local computer and then push that up, but the history of that file would still live on GitHub as well as on my local computer, which would ultimately make things slow and would still take up a lot of space. What I wanna do is really just wash my repository clean of ever having had that file on my computer. This is very analogous to another problem that you might run into, which would be putting sensitive data onto GitHub. Say it's clinical data with like patient health information or proprietary data, or perhaps worse in some ways would be your passwords, right? Or some type of access token that you're using to get access to some special database or some special website, right? And so if you need a way to cleanse out your repository, this is the episode for you. Again, there's a difference between removing a file from the current repository and then committing that and pushing that versus scrubbing your repository of ever having seen this file or this content. Again, if you merely do the delete and commit, I can go back through your history and find what that file looks like. Also for big files, you will still have a large bloated uh, repository. So what we wanna do is go ahead and remove that. And so thankfully, GitHub has some very nice documentation to help us through this. And there's a variety of tools that we can use to make this process a lot less scary um, and dangerous. <laughs> so down below in the description, I'll put a link to this page here on GitHub. It talks about large files on GitHub. And there's a variety of different versions of this page depending on the platform you are using because of some of the tooling that you might be using. Um, I use a Mac, obviously, um, but you know I think a lot of the information is gonna be the same between the three platforms. And so I've already mentioned GitHub blocks uh, files that are larger than 100 megabytes um, and um, let's see, if you, if you submit via a browser, it's 25 megabytes is the limit. And as I said here, uh, once you're over 50 megabytes, you'll get a warning from Git. Sorry to go through opposite direction here. Anyway, also your repository also uh, should stay less than one gigabyte and ideally less than five gigabytes is recommended. So we want things to be small so they're easier to work with um, in making comparisons. Because again, when you use Git, it's, it's keeping track of the changes in your files. And so if you have tons of files, tons of information, and it's always looking for what has changed, that can cause things to be pretty slow, okay? And so what we wanna do is remove files from the repository's history, as I've already talked about. And again, it gives us this warning that these will permanently remove the files from your repository on your computer and on GitHub. If the file is really important, make a local backup, right? So I am showing you how to do this. I am doing this with my own. I know people tend to get fingers that we might call fat fingers and they start hitting the keyboard and they type the wrong thing. I have done this myself. So if it's important to you, make a backup of it, right? Surely those big data files are important. You just don't want them on GitHub. So maybe make a copy of it onto your desktop before you proceed here. So unfortunately, I can't follow the simple example here of removing a file added in the most recent up, um, unpushed commit. If I come back to my directory and do, let's do get status, I see I'm up to date. And if I do get log, I see that I added my data two commits ago, right? And so I made a change to my repository um, and um, everything has already been pushed, right? So everything is a lot easier <laughs> when it's the most recent commit and before you've actually pushed that commit. So unfortunately, I've already pushed it. And unfortunately, I've already made another commit and also pushed that. And so there are instructions here um, that you can follow. And I would encourage you to do this. This is far simpler. 
if you're in that special situation. Now, if you're removing a file that was added in an earlier commit, like I am, um, then you want to go to removing sensitive data from a repository, and that there's two options it tells us about, the BFG repo cleaner and the git, git filter repo command. So we'll come to this page now. And as it mentioned, there's two options. There's git filter repo or the BFG repo cleaner. The um, git filter repo is really high powered, but kind of more difficult to use than BFG Repo Cleaner. I've never actually used BFG Repo Cleaner, and so I'm gonna give that a shot here. Um, and so again, we'll scroll down here, and it kind of gives information more about uh, sensitive data being exposed up on GitHub than perhaps large files. So we see down here using um, the BFG that it's a tool that's built and maintained by the open source community. It's not maintained by GitHub. And as GitHub readily admits, it provides a faster, simpler alternative to Git filter repo for removing unwanted data. And so you can delete files and you can also replace text in your files. And so what I want to do is delete a file. Um, you can also replace all the text and passwords with uh, kind of redacted text. And that's not what I'm doing here. I'm more concerned about deleting those large files. So I'm going to go ahead to this BFG repo cleaner. So BFG. Uh, is a repo cleaner, as it says, and um, I've never used it before, and so it's one of the reasons I wanted to be able to try it out with you all. And so um, one of the first things we'll do is go ahead and download it. And so this is going into my downloads directory, and I'm gonna go ahead and drop this in my desktop. My desktop also has my phylotyper directory. I'm gonna go ahead and make a copy of that that I'll call phylotyper underscore copy. And we will then be working out of the desktop with BFG and our Phylotyper repository. As we go through this, we want to be sure to take special care um, to kind of read the instructions before we do anything half-cocked, because deleting files is uh, risky, right? That's why we made a copy of that directory. So again, if I do git status, I see everything is up to date. I could do git pull and see I've got everything that's on the repository. If I do a git log, I see the last commit I pushed was this modify vignette to use the train set 19 data object. And then this is the commit that is the problem. Um, and so what is gonna be a problem is that our large file is up on GitHub already. And I want to remove that before I run BFG. And so what I'll do then is I'll do git rm uh, data and then train set 19 db db.rda. Again, git status has deleted that. I'll do a git commit dash m remove large db file. Okay, that's been changed. Again, if I do git status, everything is up to date. And if I do git push, then that will remove the file. Um, if I come back to my phylotyper repository and go into data, I no longer have that db.rda file, right? But it's still there, right? <laughs> so if I uh, look at the history and kind of come back, um, what you'll see is that I come back to this version here and um, I can actually see what this looked like at this time. So I can browse files um, as of that commit. And if I then go data, it's still there, right? And so now what we need to use is BFG to go ahead and clean that out. So now what we'll do is we'll go back a level and I will then do uh, git clone hyphen hyphen mirror. So what this is doing is back here, the first step in the pipeline of git clone mirror, uh, where we're gonna give it the URL to our repository. And this is making a bare repository that really only contains the database of our repository, not the full repository. So there's no files and I'll show you that here in a minute. Um, so then git clone mirror, and I go ahead and grab the URL for phylotyper. Um, and let's go back to the main branch, the most recent commit. So I'm not getting something old. Um, and so I'll go ahead and copy that. And then I'll, I'll paste that in and then run that. And again, it's cloning into the bare repository phylotyper.git. All right, so that went pretty quickly. So if I do lslth on phylotyper.git, I see these uh, directories and files. They look nothing like 
what I would see if I did ls lth on phylotyper, right? But if I did phylotyper slash dot git, then I would see some overlap between what I have here as well as what I have up here, right? Cool. So we've made the mirror of the repository. So let's come back to our BFG instructions here. And so the next thing we want to do is use BFG to clean up our repository. And so they show one example here for moving things larger than 100 megabytes. But if you come down further in their instructions, you'll see a variety of other examples for you know, removing big things or changing text and password files. I want to delete this file. And so we're going to use BFG, um, but BFG is an alias for java-jar bfg.jar. And so this will require that you have the Java runtime environment installed. Actually, if you come down to the bottom of this page, you'll see under requirements, a link for getting that Java runtime environment. It's really quick and they have different versions for Mac, Windows, and Linux. Okay, so coming back to these examples, I'm gonna go ahead and delete the files. So I'll do Java hyphen jar and then BFG. And if I do BFG and hit tab, it'll complete everything for me so I don't have to worry about the version number. And then it's hyphen hyphen delete hyphen files. Um, yep, and now I need to put in the name of the file I want to delete. And so that'll be train set 19 underscore db dot rda. And then I need to put in the name of the directory, that mirror repository. And so then I'll do phylotype dot git. So I thought I had Java installed. If I do which Java, it's there. And so let me try this again. All right, so I guess I'll have to reinstall it. I thought I had it, but uh, we'll go ahead and go through this. So the Java runtime environment here. And again, I'm on a Mac, I've got a newer Mac. So I'll go ahead and click on this. And then launching that, I'll go ahead and keep double clicking as we go through things. Uh, keep opening it. I trust Oracle or whoever is making Java these days. Go ahead and install and then put in my passphrase. All right, so it said I've been successful. So I'll go ahead and close. And then let's try this again here at the terminal. There it goes, that ran through well. Um, and so we see uh, BFG run is complete. And so when ready, run this other statement, okay? And so let's kind of just look at some of the output it had. Um, and so these are your protected commits and so their contents will not be altered. That was the head commit, um, the most recent commit. So I'm not worried about that. Um, and so, yeah, I think everything looks good. And this is the deleted file which is what I wanted to delete. So that is good. So coming back to the instructions, um, it says that the BFG will update your commits and all branches and tags so they are clean, but it doesn't physically delete the unwanted stuff. So examine the repo to make sure your history has been updated and then use the standard git gc to strip out any unwanted dirty data. So now if I do git log, oh, I've got to go into that repository, right? So if I do cd phylotyper.git, git log, um, I now see that, well, I've got that, that I've removed the big uh, file. All right, and if I do git status, it's saying fatal, this operation must run in a work tree. Uh, so I don't think it quite wants me to do that. So I'll go ahead and run this git uh, gc. So I think that all looks good. And I don't know that anything has necessarily changed. And let's come back to our instructions. So now we're ready to run this gif ref log, uh, which again was this statement that is um, here. So I'll go ahead and copy and paste that in. Don't see anything as having changed. And now if you finally want to do git push. So we'll do git push and it's done the forced update. Uh, let's come back to our repository. And of course our data should not have the DB file. But let's go back in time. Let's go to this commit. And so if we browse the files that are here, again, and if we go to data, we see that that DB file is now gone, right? And so this was the only commit that it had existed in. Actually, um, if we come forward in time um, to the, the one with the vignette, back through our commits, and if we look at modify vignette to use train set 19 data object. And again, we look at the data here, that database file is gone. Now the documentation file is still there. So if I look at man, I will still see train set 19 DB RD. That's fine. I'll remove that in the future commit. That's okay to leave. So 
I think we're in good shape there. Now what we'll need to do, as it says at the end here, is to ditch our old copies of the repository and get a fresh clone. And so I will come back to my phylotyper. Again, come to the main branch, the most recent commit. I'll go ahead and grab the URL to my clipboard. And I will uh, come back up a layer and I'll do rm-rf on phylotyper. Again, I still have the copy in case things still go wrong. And I'll then do git clone on that. And if I cd into phylotyper, I see that I've got the green, meaning everything is up to date. Git log. Um, I now see uh, the recent commit I made to remove the large DB file. Um, and everything should be good. Again, if I do ls lth on data, that large database file is gone. And so I can come back and I can do an rm rf on phylotyper.git and phylotyper.copy. And everything is none the wiser that I accidentally pushed a large file up to GitHub or perhaps uh, pushed up a file that had passwords or some other type of sensitive data in it. All right, so this is a little bit of a housekeeping episode to show you how you can go about cleaning your repository of large files or files that contain sensitive information once you've already pushed it up to GitHub. Of course, it's far easier to resolve these problems before you do that push. So always be careful and mindful of what you are pushing to GitHub and especially what you're committing to GitHub. And realize that if you're at that 50 megabyte point, you're gonna to start to get warnings. And even before you get to 50 megabytes, you might start noticing some degradation in the performance of your Git, um, your, your Git repository, okay? So in the next episode, we'll keep marching on with our Phylotyper package. And specifically, I will be showing you how you can make a data package that only contains data in it. And once you know it, it won't contain one of these database objects. It'll be the data frame. All right. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time for another episode of Code Club.